What's good, y'all? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another F1 video, man. Now, we haven't even ch really checked out Kevin Magnuson. Honestly, I don't think we have ch checked out Kevin Magnuson. Um, it's first, you know, he just remember, he, remember uh, he, he's replacing Ma uh, Master Spain. You know, he's been actually, he, has, he actually has been pretty good. I can't like this intro. I do not like this intro. What's good, y'all? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another F1 video. Man, we have how Kevin Magnussen man, has shocked F1 return with Haas for 20, 2022. Now, his first race is he's been pretty good. I think he came in P5 at the first race in Bahrain. Second race in Saudi Arabia just this past weekend. He came in nice, so... I, hey, I'm impressed. I mean, I, we actually have watched. We, we actually have caught both. But for Australia, if you guys... Do not know, we, we do usually go live during the race, so if you want to join it, hang out, come on, join your boy. Um, but, we haven't even really checked him out, because I don't really know too much about him. So, we're just going to see how he landed the shocker tournament at F1. Obviously, you know about Mazda Spain, because that's who he, he replaced, but why him out of all the drivers? Why they choose Mr. Kevin? But, anyway, don't forget to like the video and sub as well, if you are new to the channel. Now let's go and, and uh, get started. Any driver who disappears from the Formula One grid for a season could very easily never return, especially when it's an enforced exit and they make progress lining up a pretty attractive post F1 career. Kevin Magnussen looked to be Kevin in that camp of exiled F1 driver after he lost his drive at Haas at the end of 2020 because the team needed paying drivers. With Nikita Mazepin axed between the 2022 preseason tests, Haas needed a replacement, and it turned to the same driver it had to move aside for the Russian just over a year ago. Yeah, how? What happened? Like, I don't think we. Magnussen's return. Like, I don't think I know what happened. From his supposed final Grand Prix, and just a few days before he was due to race at Sebring as part of his Chip Ganassi Racing IMSA sports car program. That's a car? That's a car? Unless well, I am looking at it funny. Buy a cap. That should look hard. <laughs> it looks weird as crap though, but it looks nice. But it looks weird. I don't know if that makes sense. But it looks nice, but it looks weird. Scope out his interest in a comeback. Team principal Gunter Steiner first made contact about a week ago when Magnussen was heading to the US with his family before Sebring. Magnussen decided to go to America anyway as he wasn't sure if the call would come to anything. When Magnussen got to Miami, Steiner called again and confirmed it was on. That prompted Magnussen to leave the States immediately to sort out his contracts with Ganassi and Peugeot. Neither of those deals had a clause allowing Magnussen to leave for F1, oh. but the teams chose not to stand in his way. To that, Magnussen says he feels privileged to have worked for true racers who understood his situation. That's what's up. They didn't like it, but they understood. That's what's up. That's nice Magnuson of them. has enjoyed his 12 months racing in America in the Cadillac badge Daytona prototype, and he was preparing to be part of Peugeot's return to the Le Mans 24 hours as well. It was a yeah, that bad boy looked nice. That car looked that 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 nice and shit. final two years of his previous four season spell in F1 with Haas. And even Magnussen was surprised on. that the prospect of an F1 return appealed so much. He said, I could feel it in my stomach that I wanted to do this. I could feel it. I didn't know that I missed it that much. But when I got the opportunity, I was like, yeah. I said yes immediately. Then I thought, ah, should I have said yes? Was that clever? And very quickly, I was like, yeah, I've got to do it. It's too exciting. <laughs> Facts. Magnussen has been back in F1. F1 in his absence. He even said he would not come back to race in the midfield. By that, he says, he meant a return to the situation Haas was in back in 2020. That year, Magnussen and teammate Roman Grosjean, who had been regular points challengers for Haas in 2017 and 18, had been reduced to making up the numbers as the team's fortunes nosedived. That's the situation Magnussen had no interest in returning to. 
But F1's major technical rule change for 2022, Haas's renewed efforts behind the scenes, and a multi-year contract were enough to make him realise he still had a big itch to scratch in F1. Magnussen said, I run out of motivation to be running around the back. Those two years were tough. Then I went away, did some other racing, grabbed podiums, pole positions, a win, and that was all really fun. And I was enjoying it. But then Gunter called Gunter. me and ruined all that. <laughs> So he ain't want to come back to mid to mid table, whatever. But at the same time, listen, I don't, Haas, I don't, I still don't expect Haas to be that great. But also going back to Haas, I did see Schumacher got charged for like a million dollars or like that's how much you have to pay. Haas has to pay for like the damage because of like Schumacher's crash and qualifying. Holy crap. A milli? Woo wee. Hopefully Schumacher is able to race in Australia next week. That would be nice. But like I said, Kevin's been solid. He's been solid in the first few races, but this is one the first few races. Who knows what's going to happen? But it's good that, you know, he... That passion, desire, you know, from leaving that car racing he was doing. Come back to F1. And it's been pretty, you know, been beneficial. Drivers get a second chance in F1, but this is actually Magnussen's third chance. Third chance. It's easy to third time to charm. Based debut podium finisher who drove for McLaren in 2014, then spent 2015 on the sidelines before returning with Renault in 2016. He said, "Life is full of surprises, and this is certainly one of the very big ones." Before we move on to why this move made sense for both sides and the impact it can have on Mick Schumacher, this is a quick thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. Whether you've been with us for a long time or you're one of the tens of thousands of people who have joined us in recent weeks. It's great to have you along and if you're not yet part of our team, consider hitting that button anytime so you don't miss a thing from the race. Why well, makes sense. I mean, he already does have experience with him anyway. It's as simple as Haas just going back to his old driver because it's what the team knows, it's comfortable, oh. and it's safe. Not my bad. Basically, my bad. It's not really <laughs> bringing back the retiring Felipe Massa when Valtteri Bottas was poached by Mercedes for 2017. It's easy to forget Magnussen is only 29. One of his most interesting points as his F1 career came to an end was that he felt a cruel irony that he was peaking as a driver right when he had no future in the championship. There were plenty of people. Dude, okay, this clock pisses me off, man. I, I don't know why. I'm just so used to, like, I, I don't like the military type clock because it does get me a bit confused. But once you start getting, like, used to it and you start seeing around, it's not really that hard to figure out what time it is. Like, it's 5.38 p.m. Not 17.38. 17.38. It's 5.38 p.m. But... Most people Jay wouldn't Haas really know that. Felt Magnuson had really blossomed during the team's struggles in 2020. Oh, rich energy! Oh he God! To a driver who then didn't not have them uh, to showcase dweebs. Magnuson is an excellent option to bring into the fold on short notice and young enough that a multi-year deal is worthwhile. He can realistically be at this team and perform at a high level for years to come. It means if it does take some time for yeah. Magnussen to get back into I the come back for one year either, bro. going to be plenty of scope afterwards I agree. to get results. I come back for one year. Magnussen is not immune to the challenge of returning to F1 after time away without a proper winter or pre-season, but there are factors that certainly mitigate the effect. The familiarity of Haas is important because even though he's been out of F1 for 15 months or so now and wouldn't have done any work on the 2022 car in the simulator, he knows the team, knows their processes, knows all the people and will be very comfortable there immediately. That's what's up. He's in action in Bahrain this week and he slots into working with what would have been Mazepin's crew, which was actually Grosjean's side of the garage when Magnussen was last at the Top team. Top tier finish, However, both Magnuson races. However, he still knows that side of the team well. There's a great deal less to learn than there would be for a new driver, and Magnussen's popular within the team as well, which will be excellent for morale, something in short supply at Haas in recent times. On and off track, Magnussen will bring good experience and act as a known quantity. He can also inform and steer development under these new rules. Once he's up to speed, Haas can count on Magnussen to score points if the car is capable of it. Which it has. What it means for Schumacher. Well, he hasn't really been there. Magnussen can also be a really good benchmark for Mick Schumacher, who now has a teammate he can rely on to be a mentor, but also a serious yeah, competitor. Yeah, now he's a freaking scrub. This is the first time he feels like the older driver, but he <laughs> is keen to embrace the role. 
It will take some time to build up a rapport, but there is already a little bit of a connection there, as Schumacher was part of the Haas team on Magnussen's farewell Abu Dhabi weekend in 2020. The other key element to this is what we will learn about Schumacher. He did everything that could be asked of him in his rookie season last year, but his ultimate potential is still unclear. Schumacher was going into this season as the clear team leader, who would be hoping to drag Haas back into the midfield and point scoring contention. Now the goalposts have moved. It's he will exciting. still be expected to achieve those things, but he'll be doing it. It's exciting. He's going to be super motivated and you can very easily feel that he is super focused. He's a Formula 2 champion. He's going to be very strong. I'm looking forward to learning from him and working with him. Mm. Alongside a driver who should bring a lot to Haas. The key now is for both drivers to contend for better results than Haas has become used to in the last couple of years, and Schumacher has to be capable of reaching Magnussen's level. Mazepin didn't tick those boxes, but Magnussen does. He will be a great benchmark that will give us a much clearer idea of Schumacher's capabilities. Damn. Damn. <laughs> All right. All right. What? A. Video. Very good explanation about why Kevin Maxson came back. Learned a lot. It makes a lot of sense now. Um, like so, hopefully he's able to continue what he did. You know, the past two races and continue on. But yes, like I said, that, fami that familiarity is still with them. You know, like the team stuff like that. Even going back to his Grosjean days. But being at F1 for about what 15, 16 months and, and coming back and being one of the most surprising drivers of the you know of the season. But like I said, it is, it is only two races though. I'm impressed. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Don't forget to like the video and stuff as well. Comment down below, you guys thoughts and reactions. See you guys later.